the secrets in astrological symbols created, directed, and presented by Reverend Dr. Dickie Joe Mullen. In this video, uh, Dr. Mullen will discuss cosmic calligraphy as we see in the various symbols of the zodiac and their implications for personal readings based on one's birth chart and the current period of time. This is astrologer Dickie Jo Mullen with a little class for you and what's going on when you look at all the squiggles and swirls in your birth chart. This is adopted from a book that I wrote some two years ago, Star Journey, and we're still looking for a publisher for it. It's gone through a number of incarnations. But let's take a glimpse into cosmic calligraphy. I like that phrase. And that is, what is astrology's own symbolic language? Looking at a birth chart, we have the horoscope of the United States that was just illustrated for you as a glance. It's almost like looking at cryptic things or another language, but after a little while, it's just as easy as picking up a newspaper and reading it. The symbols have five different components. The first one is this. This is a horizontal rod, and it forges a link between two elements. Its role is connective. The vertical rod resembles a ray or a scepter, and it represents an authoritative and assertive energy. Next, there is simply the dot. Um, the dot represents the opening through which energies pour. It shows the beginnings of the finite coming from the infinite universe around us. The next symbol that you'll see repeated over and over again in cosmic calligraphy is the circle. The circle is an unbroken curve without beginning or end, and it refers to the totality of energy in the cosmos. It suggests the idea of everything in the whole universe, without beginning and without end. And next we have the semicircle. The semicircle is two sides of the principle of duality. Here the circle divides and specializes, and it creates a variety of different life forms. And the horoscope map is about uh, patterns of life on Earth. The semicircle shows the illustration of incarnation for the purpose of growth. It shows how everything is a part of the larger whole. And then there is the cross. The cross illustrates the physical structure of our tangible universe. It represents matter, the substance of everything we can reach out and touch around us. From these five forms are designed the glyphs that are familiar to astrology students all over the world, and in learning astrology, they become your alphabet. A closer look at the composition of the calligraphy of the cosmos can help us to understand exactly what the heavens are trying to tell us about the world around us. The circle with the dot in the middle is the sun, and the symbol on um, represents circumstances around the individual ego. This symbol suggests a nucleus within an atom. Potential, willpower, and the quality of individuality are here. This will show you where your sun sign is in the birth chart. That's the familiar horoscope sign everybody knows, and the circle with the dot orients you there. This next one is easy. Um, it is the moon, and... The moon is a semicircle in its pure form. It shows receptivity. It acts as a chalice or cup, and the moon holds emotions or feelings. It also relates a lot to water, which is essential to life. The two halves of the semicircle show the difference between the inner and the outer self, the dichotomy between the conscious and subconscious minds of the psyches are illustrated here. Next, the glyph is the planet Mercury. Mercury, we see the circle, 
cross, and semicircle combined. Mercury is the planet of intellectual energy, the force of one's active intelligence. The crescent at the top shows high aspirations, and the circle refers to the source of mental energy. The cross at the base shows the necessity of the mind being practical enough to function within the confines of earthly matter. Mercury shows how you think, travel, speak. It's a very, very important factor in the birth chart. The next one is very easy to remember. It looks like the symbol for woman, and it is, of course, the planet Venus. We have the cross supporting the circle here. Venus represents all that is cultural, full of love and the beautiful. The combination of forms um, shows pure spirit inspiring matter to become ever more soft and lovely. It also shows that the highest spiritual aspirations take precedence over our earthly bounds. The next symbol is also an easy one to remember. It's the symbol for male. This symbol is almost a reversal of the Venusian emblem. Mars is the planet of war, sports, drive, initiative, get up and go, energy. Here we have the rod surmounted by the circle. And since it's a diagonal rod, both the connective and authoritative energies are illustrated here. Mars's symbol shows that it inspires new levels of self-expression from the spiritual tonality of the world of earthly matter. The next symbol is the largest planet in our solar system. It's been getting a lot of attention in the news. New pictures of it um, offered by NASA are quite exciting. And this is this emblem of the largest, most massive of planets shows the crescent of the semicircle rising above the cross. It suggests how the soul and psyche triumph over the confines of Earth. This symbol suggests that the receptive and few fluid qualities should be developed to overcome restrictions. Jupiter shows philosophy of life, religion, and good luck in the natal chart. Next is the celestial heavyweight, the ringed planet, Saturn. The symbol suggests the reversal of the Jupiter elements. Here the cross towers above the semicircle. Saturn shows how the practical needs can be a catalyst to foster imagination. The cross on top indicates the demands of material existence, which must be met before consciousness meets contentment. The next symbol is one that people take a little bit longer to recognize for some reason, but maybe if you look at the components in it, it'll be a little bit easier. This emblem shows two semicircles on either side of a cross. Uranus is termed the awakener among the planets. The two semicircles show recognition of the individual personality, the crescent, and through unity with the whole or the completed circle. The cross shows connection with others through the vehicle of matter and the experiences of earthly carnation. Uranus is the planet of the original, the bohemian, the inventor. It has creative energy, and that's illustrated by the semicircles facing in different directions, yet they come back to show an entire circle. Here's a beautiful, mystical, interesting symbol. It suggests the sea god's trident, and this, of course, is Neptune. The circle of spirit is pierced and divided by the cross of matter. The cross is the physical body, and the pair of crescents show sense impressions. Intuition and sensitivity are the heights treated by Nept uh, uh, heightened by Neptune. We have twin crescents, and this shows the astral world and the physical world. Neptune is the world of dreams and the sixth sense. And this also suggests the ego being freed from personal identity. Um, Neptune has an angelic influence. Finally, here's Pluto. 
Um, I know Pluto's been debunked, but we astrologers are waiting. It was debunked when it was retrograde by the scientists, and we think it's going to come back as a planet with a vengeance. It certainly is powerful in the birth chart. So let's include it anyway, even though its uh, position here in the parade of planets is a little nebulous. Pluto's symbol shows a complete and perfect circle rising above the semicircle and the cross. This illustrates the principles of rebirth and redemption. As the force that transforms and renews, this emblem shows that every ending is a new beginning. It reminds us that we're able to alter our individual destinies. Um, for the crescent shows that the cross can take what it chooses from the totality of the whole circle. Next, let's look at the glyphs of the 12 zodiac signs from Aries through Pisces. The symbols here are um, areas in space. The sun, moon, and planets, which I just mentioned a little while ago, are actual physical bodies generating a type of magnetic energy. And instead, the signs of the zodiac are the belt of space around Earth. If you think about um, the springtime and the Earth moving around the sun in the springtime, how different it is in midsummer or winter, that will talk about the Earth's traveling around the sun, moving through the signs of the zodiac. They're sort of lenses through which the energies just mentioned will pass. And let's begin with the springtime sign of Aries the ram. Um, this symbol for Aries shows the vertical rod, and then the two crescents that come out of it. This is authority of the pioneering spirit, and it suggests a seedling springing forth from the darkness, the springtime sign. Next we have Taurus, and here is the circle surmounted by a semicircle. Taurus is identified with wealth and comfort. The circle plus shows that the whole is more than the sum of its parts. The next zodiac sign is Gemini, the twins, and the, the, uh, the sign of the twins is two sets of rods connected by teamwork or interconnections. So the rods are strengthened by cross ties and tops, showing the duality of the twin. The next symbol is going to be the sign of Cancer, rolled by the moon, and there is a complete circle that's formed by two curving crescents, protective qualities, the crab shell, sensitive, introspective, possessive. These are the key word, keynotes suggested by the inward turn of the crabs. Next, here is the lion's mane, Leo. And we have a crescent form with a high curved arch, suggesting grandeur and flamboyance. Here the crescent breaks away from its form, basic form, to become more elaborate, more decorative. The next symbol is going to be for Virgo. And the Virgo symbol is the vertical rods connected by crescents with an elaborate knot suggested. Identity establishment plus preparation for participation in the greater whole would be the message suggested by this symbol. Halfway through, we're now with Libra. Um, this sign of partnership and unity is symbolized by the connective horizontal rod surmounted by an elongated crescent. Receptivity and socialization are illustrated here. And next we have a symbol that, until you look at them next to each other a couple times, can be sometimes confused with Virgo. This is Scorpio the Scorpion. And the symbol suggests um, the vertical rods here are connected by the crescents of intuition at the top and then directed toward a point. Looking at the point, there's a sense of intensity and direction. Here is Sagittarius, and Sagittarius is a diagonal rod with authority, connection, and then it ascends to form a cross 
at the, at the bottom, and then at the top there are two little side lods. This shows old confines are left behind in the search for new beginning. This cross at the bottom is old confines, and then the vertical rod going up with the two sides going in different directions suggests an expanding universe, the arrow moving forward. Here's the glyph for Capricorn. A complete circle descends into a crescent, and then there are two diagonal rods, like a V form, and that forms the face of the goat. This is industrious activity, as well as the ability to both lead and follow, suggested by the glyph. Aquarius is next. This is an easy one to remember. It suggests the liquid from the water bearer's pitcher flowing. And we have two horizontal lines, but they become zigzags. This suggests um, the present ego dealing with those around us and the formation of adaptability and originality. Last of all are the two fish swimming in different directions. There is Pisces. The two semicircles represent the conflict between logic and emotion, and they're joined by a connective horizontal rod. The message is that overcoming and finding compromise and the attraction of opposites is the message of the Piscean. Looking at the different symbols and looking at a birth chart, um, the United States of America is kind of an intriguing one because places have horoscopes and so do events, not just people. I use the Libra Rising Ascendant. Believe it or not, the time of day, not the day of the year, July 4th, 1776, but the time is a real topic of debate among astrologers. If you want to get into a volatile debate, with professional astrologers. Just bring up the U.S. horoscope. I think it has to be the Libra ascendant. Liberty and justice for all. And then also Benjamin Franklin is supposed to have been an astrologer. And this puts the birth time near high noon, which is always related to success. Um, also, a number of U.S. presidents have had Libra ascendants. Um, so July 4th, 1776, 12.30 p.m. local mean time in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This is the right chart to use if you want to set it up, um, aspiring astrologers. And then as you write the glyphs or look at them as they come off the computer, whichever you do, think of the components and what this really suggests. This is astrologer Dickie Jo Mullen with a little look into the composition of the birth chart. On my website, Sky Maiden Musings, you'll find a number of of different articles about astrology and metaphysics, and also I have daily Facebook posts about updates for the day. And it's been a pleasure sharing this with you. I hope you enjoy astrology as much as I do as you look at what's really going on inside the horoscope map.